Hi and welcome back to Doctor 64. Today we need to take a look at my 1084 monitor. If I turn it on, the power LED stays off and it doesn't show a picture. And it makes this noise. I already removed the back cover, so let's take a look inside. Working on a CRT monitor is dangerous. We have high voltage on the tube and several mains capacitors in the power supply. My model is a 1084P from Central Europe. This is the flyback transformer generating the high voltage for the picture tube. And this is our switching transistor for the flyback transformer. The focus and screen adjustments from the flyback transformer. So at first let's remove the main plug and let's discharge the picture tube. The anode can have a voltage up to 30 kV, so we have to be very careful. If we search the web for a root cause of our failure, usually the flyback transformer is the problem. For our monitor model, the HR7506 is an alternative spare part. When turning the monitor around, I heard something rustling. The hook of the control panel cover. Ha, got you! After a little cleaning of the inside with compressed air and a brush, the whole thing looks much better. Here at the underside of our PCB we can see the solder pads of our flyback transformer. Let's put some flux onto the solder joints and remove the solder with our desoldering gun. remove the protective plastic cover so that we get access to the flyback and then we can take out the transformer. Of course we could also first detach the anode contact from the tube but we did discharge it before so we should be safe. So next we have to desolder the cathode contact. I use the desoldering gun because it's already hot and I don't have to turn on the things booms. The soldering iron I mean, sorry. The nick board don't need to hang around so let's put it back onto the tube. Here we see the exact type designation so the information we found on forum 64 was correct. Now we can order the replacement transformer. I found it on eBay and ordered it there. Next, let's check the high voltage switching transistor. Let's check the diode between base and collector and that's ok. And now the one between base and emitter. We measure a short because the base is connected to ground through a low value resistor. And of course the other way around too. And now let's check the reverse polarity between base and collector. The diode blocks, so that's ok. Next I want to check the resistor and the diode. But first let's desolder the switching transistor to check it completely. So first base and collector, yes that's ok. Then base and emitter, it's also ok. And then again we check the reverse polarity of the two diodes. 
and they both seem to be fine. If we want to check the diet in circuit that's not possible because in parallel there's the resistor. So if we want to check the diet and the resistor we have to desolder one side each. But first, because we can, let's check the transistor with our multi-device tester. The transistor is fine and also the gain is in its limits. So now I desoldered one side of the resistor and the anode of the diode. The schematic here tells us 3.3 ohms, but the resistor itself is 5.6 ohms. So the resistor is okay. So now let's check the diode, and this looks also good. And the reverse polarity is also okay. So let's solder the resistor and the diode back in. And the switching transistor for sure too. And because our monitor is already open, we spray some contact spray on the potentiometers. And some on the switches too. And finally, we clean the PCB. And here it is, hidden in this nice yellow package. Our new flyback transformer. The pinout looks identical. And we have both the screen and the focus adjustments. Unfortunately, the hooks for mechanical relief are missing. Before we solder our new part in, let's discharge the tube again. It doesn't have much energy stored, but it could still bite us. Okay, let's check if the transformer fits nicely. Uh, but it doesn't seem so. Let's try from another angle. Okay, it seems that one of the pins is not on the correct same position as on the original one. I decided to solder a piece of wire, but bending the pin might also work. It should be long enough. Measure the position exactly. That should work. Snip the long part off and try again. No, it doesn't fit. Maybe some of the pins are bent. I tried several times, but it doesn't work. So my idea was to make a template that you can use to straighten the pins. To see the holes even better, I marked them with a pen. Now we can clearly see the pins that are bent. Let's straighten them out and try again. And after a bit of fiddling, everything fits. Okay, that could have been a bit easier. Now we solder the flyback back in. I use a little more solder because the lack of the mechanical relief. I hope this will do the job for the next 35 years. This is our repaired pin. I try to be very careful. Okay, that's it. All soldering done now. Doesn't that look good again? Now let's solder back the wires onto the nick board. At first, the cathode. Put the neck board back onto the tube. Now let's connect back carefully the anode contact. 
and check that the rubber seal is flat and tight. Put back the main PCB into its position. Clip back the plastic protector. And let's prepare for the moment of truth. Yes, yeah. Houston, we have high voltage. Mission accomplished. The high voltage collapses every few seconds. But wait, we haven't made any adjustments to the transformer yet. And yes, that was the problem. The screen adjustment was almost fully turned up. First, I roughly adjust the image position. And I forgot to plug in the connector for the color signal. That's why we only have the brightness signal here. If I turn the screen control, I change the basic brightness. So we first set all the controls to the middle position and then set the basic brightness. In order to set the image sharpness correctly, we set the front brightness a little higher, as it affects the focus settings. And now discharging one last time, so that we can safely screw the housing back together. The picture looks really great and sharper than before. Of course, it's possible that you could have done it with the old transformer, but who unscrews a working monitor to try it out? Be careful! Thank you for watching, I hope there was something interesting for you. If you like, please give me a thumbs up, write in the comments and share the video with your friends. In the video description I will put some useful links to other Commodore Monitor repair videos and a very helpful Commodore Monitors overview webpage. Until next time, stay healthy, you're Dr. 64.